Hi everyone, Cody here. I was gone for a week and a half, which is several days longer than I was planning on, but uh, I'm here now and I got a lot of projects planned and uh, let's get to them. I just caught some grasshoppers for my birds. Let's go ahead and show you them. Yeah, see these guys? Little chuckers. Okay, so here's the black sands that came from what we panned down in California. I went ahead and took all the large pieces out. That'll make things easier. I'm, and I'm letting it dry. I got it spread out. I'm going to let it dry. Then I'll be able to take the rest of the magnetic iron out. You know, it needs to be dry so the gold doesn't stick to the iron while I'm pulling it out with the magnet. Now once I got all the magnetic iron out, I'm going to go ahead and put mercury in it and collect all the little tiny pieces of gold that I can't pan out by hand. Well, that's drying. I'm going to go ahead and light this seaweed on fire and burn it down to ashes. See, I just got it set on the barbecue. This little uh, thing here I've set up. I've also uh, added some accelerant, so it should be pretty quick. Okay, now that this is thoroughly dry, I'm going to go ahead and pull the magnetic iron out with this magnet. Okay, there we are. All the magnetic iron in this side, everything else that's in this side. Yeah, that seaweed's definitely burning down. Got my concentrates inside of a two liter bottle here. It has to contain everything. I've added some uh, dilute hydrochloric acid. It has to clean the gold so that the mercury will stick. Okay, here we go. A little more. There we go. There's the mercury. You can see the mercury there on the bottom of the black sands because it is quite heavy. Uh, yep, just give it a good shake now. Probably shake it for about an hour or two just to make sure the mercury contacts all of the gold particles. Okay, so I've recollected the mercury. I saved all of this just in case there's still some bits of mercury in there. I think I got most of it, if not all of it. Uh, here's the acid that I had in the bottle that I washed out, you know, if it's got any dissolved mercury. It shouldn't have any, but, you know, I don't want to be dumping that on the ground. Okay, I put the mercury on top of a rag, and I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the mercury through the rag to filter out all the gold particles. Alright, there's the gold. It's washed off the rag and then dissolve the mercury with some nitric acid. All right, a few minutes in the acid, and there's all the gold. Look at that. Still in a little ball there. It'll break up. <laughs> How about that? Let's go get those other nuggets. Set those in there. You'll notice that uh, the acid is starting to work on the mercury that's coating them. Should make short work of that. Oh yeah. All right, there's the gold. Looks like it's almost exactly six grains, just over a third of a gram. That's uh, a bit less than my estimate, but still, that's pretty cool. I got a little project planned for this, but it's gonna be a little while before I get to that, so I'm gonna go ahead and shelve this project for now. Let's see how this uh, seaweed's coming. Yeah, see, I piled it all up and lit it on fire again. Looks like it's uh, still burning. So I think it's working. Well, we're waiting for that to finish burning down. Let's go ahead and check on these bees. Haven't seen them in a while. Uh, I see they've been building comb and stuff. There should be a, a queen cell that's either hatched or about to hatch. All right, I got it open, and there's the queen. See her? And I don't know if you can see, but down at the bottom of those cells are some eggs. So she managed to get mated. Very good. This little hive's gonna take off again. This hive also has a queen. I don't think she's mated though, because I don't see any eggs, and she's not quite as big. Reduced down to ashes. They're still a little dark. It could burn a lot more, but it doesn't seem to want to burn very well, so this is probably as good as it's gonna get. Let's go ahead and add some uh, distilled water here. That way we can wash the iodine out. 
Okay, I filtered out the uh, ashes, something that's fairly clear. Go ahead and let this settle for a while. Now that it's mostly clear, I'm going to go ahead and take a sample out and uh, do a quick test to see if it's got any iodine. Okay, there's my sample. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of sulfuric acid to acidify the solution. Give the metallic ions something to latch onto when the iodine is freed. Now to free the iodine, I need a strong oxidizer. This ought to do just fine. Now when I splash a little of this in, it should turn a nice red-brown. There we go. It has definitely got iodine in it. Since I confirmed the presence of iodine, I'm going to go ahead and boil the solution down and concentrate it as much as I can. That way I have a better chance of actually getting iodine crystals. Alright, there's quite a bit there. And I got a little more in the pan here. Alright, this ought to be interesting. Got me some sulfuric acid here. Oh yeah, it's doing things. Oh, look at that. That's iodine vapor. Hold on. Uh, cover that. You know? That's iodine right there. Holy crap. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> look how purple. I should have used this uh, pan. Yeah. That would have been better. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and add some more acid. Let's purple good okay I might be able to make iodine crystals just with that yeah look at that that's iodine might even be some crystals in there I'm gonna go ahead and put it in this get it wet and add some sodium hydroxide to redissolve the iodine crystals and that way I'll have a solution with pure iodine in it that'll be my sodium iodide All right, here's the sodium hydroxide Let's see if that'll dissolve it back into solution. Uh, yeah, it didn't really collect any crystals or anything up there. So let's go ahead and add the peroxide now and see what happens. Oh, it's reacting. Well, that might have been a bad idea. We didn't like that. <laughs> so I wiped off what was stuck to the pan and uh, it looks like it might have some iodine in there but also could I have made liquid bromine as well? I mean this this rag smells uh, like chlorine. I'm gonna go ahead and put it inside this with the iodine and see what it does. Well it went clear so I guess that means that it was in fact iodine or perhaps bromine and the uh, sodium hydroxide was able to convert it back to a salt so yeah so now I just got to get the uh, fluid out of that pulp evaporate it down and uh, maybe I'll try again with more concentrated stuff all right depulped and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, boil this down again all right we got a little bit of salt collected hopefully it's got a lot of iodide still it's probably mostly sodium hy hydroxide to tell the truth got here a pop can full of ice to hopefully collect the iodine vapor that comes off after I inject some sulfuric acid into there. It's probably my last chance to get this to work. Hopefully I'm able to collect some of that iodine. There it is. Several minutes later everything's cooled off. Let's have a look. There's something on there, and yeah, there's definitely something in there. Let's try adding just some cold water. Cold water's in. There's something floating on the top, looks interesting. Something on the side that might be iodine. Let's have a look at the bottom. I'd say, yeah, that, that's something. That looks like crystals. Yeah. Let's get those out of there and put them into like a little vial and see how they look. Sure looks like iodine to me. Look at that. Oh yeah, it's even turning the solution a bit brown. Must be dissolving a little bit. But yeah, I think I might have done it. There you go. I think I've managed to isolate iodine. 
Yeah, they're purple. I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but they're a little bit shiny too, so. <laughs> How about that? That took a lot of work. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time.